So now I put the bottom rail. I want to find out where my balusters they're going to land. I'd like to start from the center and go on both directions. So this is the center. And I'm going to start from the center and put my baluster, which the bottom of it, six and quarter. One inch in between. If you leave one inch, the whole installation will meet code. You will have less than four inches opening between the balusters. So this is another six and quarter. One inch. Six and quarter. One inch. Six and quarter. In. Let me drop the rebar inside of it. Okay, start with the first one. And as you see, the rebar is going to be staggering inside of it. You could go for a full rebar, but it happens I have the rebars cut to smaller length. So this is the end of this rebar. The other one, we'll go ahead and put this one. Push it nicely down. Cover it. And we'll see. Okay, so we'll start with this one. We'll put nice amount of mortar. We'll take our first baluster, and we're going to go ahead and set it in, center it, and we'll check it for plumb a little bit later. Shake it, you see? It should nicely squeeze all the mortar in between. Okay, clean this one up a little bit, move to the next one. These balusters, they were cast over a year ago, so they've been weathering outside. Good. Okay. So now what we need, we need to be sure they're nice in place and level with equal distance on top. I'm going to lock in the rebar in here. and put it on top of the balusters, put my mortars, and drop my top on top of it. By locking the rebar in, this will allow me to, uh, this will lock the whole system from shifting and coming off. A lot of this is going to squeeze out, so, but put a little bit extra because they're not exactly the same heights, all of them. So pretty much put a little bit of uh, grout inside the groove here. And we lift up the whole unit. And set it upside down. 
will have to have a couple of people helping here, but I'm going to be able to do it by myself. Hammer. Try to squeeze a little bit the joint. ideal it's to let it squeeze out and you could clean it up and as you see you put more weight on top it will squeeze down we could finish grouting it later so now start cleaning all this get a nice sponge you know remove anything in between clean it up okay we'll go ahead put the top now I, I have put grout here on top of it so we'll go ahead put it down and gently shake it in place center it tap it down and clean up any grout squeeze on the edge okay. now we're finished with one segment here I want to show a little bit the grout area the joint as you see it's it's a wide area here almost like a 3 8 of inch but by uh, putting the mortar in between and finishing it you could barely tell there is a joint in here you know it's very presentable there is another joint and something else I want to mention here on the end the reason we have this one sticking out a little bit because we're planning to add stone in this area uh, stone cladding and it will come flush with this edge here so we took advantage of this one and once we put the stone we remove the siding and put the stone it will look finished